Visit sayaright.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. In this tutorial video, we're going to be showing you how to make a sunshade for a powerboat. We'll be making it from a shade cloth fabric that's available from Sayarite. It's an HDPE fabric. Hi, I'm Eric Grant with Sayarite, and today we're going to show you how to make a sunshade. And this sunshade set up on a yacht, and we have carbon fiber poles that are supporting each corner. And we have hollow at the sides. It's an HDPE fabric with a mesh opening. So it allows a little bit of breathability for a temporary sunshade like this. And it also, if it starts to rain, a little bit of the water will come through so it won't pool up and collect water like a cup. We're gonna show you how it's done now. We'll be using our original sunshade as a pattern for the new. However, we still wanna have a discussion about measuring if you don't have one to replicate. Now we'll be making this brand new sunshade from the old sunshade, which, which is actually brand new, but the old sunshade is made from a material that doesn't allow for any breathability. So what do you do if you don't have an old sunshade to replicate? Well, what you would do is you would install your carbon fiber poles or whatever poles you're using, and you'd take a measurement from the top of the pole, this pole, to the top of this pole, and you'd write that down on your paper, and you do that for every single pole for each edge of the sail shade. Then, if you're using the uh, shock cord cover clips, what you would do is you'd subtract two inches from every distance, and that would be the corner of your sail shade. For us, if we were taking measurements, we're going to take away about two inches because our poles do not flex much. Watch here. These are large poles, and they don't flex much more than one inch, so our subtraction of two inches from each end measurement is probably good. But if you have smaller carbon fiber poles of uh, one and a half inch, you'll probably find that they flex a lot more. So you may want to subtract up to 10 inches for those. Typically on a boat, we want the sail shade corners to be about two inches from the poles when they're drawn taut. So it always depends on how much your poles flex. If you don't have your old sunshade as a pattern and you have a complex sunshade like this one with six sides, you not only need to measure around the perimeter as seen here in red, but you also have to separate the two halves into separate rectangles because each one of them has its own special shape. The next measurement will be the center poles from starboard to port. And now think of them as separate rectangles again. Now we need the diagonal measurements. So now, if you don't have your old sunshade as a pattern, you can use these measurements to pattern your new one on the new fabric. Now we have our old sunshade fabric that we can use as a pattern, so we're not gonna show you how to transfer your measurements onto the fabric. If you don't have an old sunshade to use as a pattern, those are the measurements you'll need to the correct size. Oh, and don't forget to take away the two inches to 10 inches, depending on the flex of your pole, from each end of the measurements so we can accommodate for the flex and also to keep the sail shade away from the pole by approximately two inches when it's done. For us, we're going to use the original sunshade as a pattern. The original sail shade was laid over the top of our cool right fabric. Now it's time to pattern it. How much fabric do you need? Now we're using our old sunshade uh, to make the new sunshade out of mesh material, an HDPE fabric. You may be tempted to actually measure the center, which has hollow, for, so from that edge to this edge, and I get 142 inches. And you'll say, okay, well, that's how much fabric I need. But that has a hollow built into it to help support the sun shade. So what you should do instead is measure from a corner, like down here. So from this corner, straight up to where this corner intersects, I get 148 or 49 inches. So a big difference. So when you measure for how much fabric you need, just don't measure from the center of the hollows, measure from corner to corner. After you measure one side, come and measure the other to make sure that your fabric falls within the width of the fabric or if you may need to sew panels together. This one is 134 inches from corner to corner, so I just need to add four extra inches to this. Now don't forget to add some extra for a hem around the perimeter. I'm gonna add four inches, two inches on one side and two inches on the other. 
Then you can order your fabric from Sailrite. So how much fabric do we need? Well, our fabric is 150 inches wide, and side B, 138 inches for us, will fit within those parameters. So we need 153 inches of fabric, or 4.25 yards. You can see on these sides, there's a good amount of hollow. But for some reason, when they made this sunshade, they didn't add much hollow on this long side. Hollow helps to support the edge, and it also helps to support the center of the sunshade. So because of that, I'm gonna probably copy the hollow here because that is seven to 10% here, here, there, there, and there, but here it's not. So I'm gonna make the hollow seven to 10% for this edge as well. Now I'm using chalk, which marks very well on this uh, HDPE fabric. Uh, which is a, uh, a sunshade or sail shade material. And I'm gonna mark the corners just by making a triangle like this at each corner. And then where the hollows are acceptable, I'll actually just trace around the perimeter. Now remember, we have to add a uh, allowance for him and we'll do that later on at the uh, loft table. So I'm gonna do this at every one of the corners. When selecting your shade cloth fabric at the Sayrite website, you'll find that there are two main brands, maybe more in the future. One of them is called Polytex, which is 150 inches wide, and the other one is called Paracel. It's 118 inches wide. Both of those brands are top quality HDPE fabrics. Okay, to confirm that we have anywhere from 7 to 10% hollow, what you want to do is you want to lay a tape measure from corner to corner like I've done. And it measures for this side 91 inches from that corner. Then, somewhere at the middle position, take a measurement from the edge of the sail shade out, and I get seven and a quarter inches from here to there. So what I want to do is I want to take 91 times, let's say 8%, times 0 .08, and I get 7.28 inches. So they used an 8% hollow for this side, and probably for the other ones, except for the, that one over there. I don't know why they didn't do it. So we're going to uh, duplicate the hollow just by tracing around these sides that we know have the correct hollow. Then we're gonna create our own hollow for this side. Remember that we have to still add enough for a hem allowance. So I'm gonna be adding um, some fabric for either a single or a double, double hem when we get it back to our work table. Okay, we have all the sides marked except for this one where I don't have a lot of hollow, so I'm gonna just move the sail up and uh, put our tape measure on the, these two corners. So I want my tape measure to be straight. I need a little bit more tape on this edge from corner to corner, right there. And right there. So now it looks pretty, like it's pretty straight. So it's 133, 133 times 0 0.08 equals 10.64. So 10 and a half. So at the middle position, I'm gonna measure 10 and a half inches at about 66, cause that's the middle for us. And I'm gonna put a mark here, okay? To create hollows, I love to use a half inch uh, PVC pipe that you pick up at your hardware store. Unfortunately, this one's a teeny bit short for this side, but we're gonna still make it work. It's better if it goes actually all the way to your corners or slightly past. Now, lucky for us, we found a piece of trim. This is just a, uh, it's actually a PVC trim. It'll work as well and it's long enough. So I'm gonna put it right on the corner here and put my weight on there to hold it in, in the spot that I want it. And do the same thing over here. Get this out of the way for now. Now, we can take this and we can bend it up and make adjustments to the edges to our 8% hollow for us. You can have anywhere from 7 to 10%. The more hollow, the more it supports the sail, but the less sail you have. Now we're a little bit off here, so you just make fine-tune adjustments until you've got it exactly where you want it. And you look at the hollow to make sure it looks good and it looks great, right, like that. So now we trace this for our new hollow. 
The Cool Right fabric is now marked to the finished size, but we need to add some hem allowance. In this next chapter, we're going to show you how we easily add two inches for a double hem. Now we need to put a two inch um, hem, or I'm sorry. Now we need to add a two inch allowance for a double hem. We're going to do a double hem here. If you do a single hem, you need to add one inch and then use a hot knife to cut it. This is a great way to add two inches. Just use a two inch uh, tape and uh, you can tape it along the edge that you, drew, that you drew down and then cut along it. So I'm going to position it directly beside the chalk that we made. Now there's shape in this, so you're gonna have a few wrinkles every once in a while. You're just looking for that consistent edge. I'm gonna do one side at a time. So I'm gonna do this side and and make sure that it looks good by looking down it and then cut it out and then do another side. Now if you sight down this, um, you can see it looks pretty good. It doesn't have to be perfect because this is a just a hollowed edge. Perfection is not necessarily required. So I'm going to come in here with my scissors and then I'm going to trim right along that tape. Now that this side's cut, we just remove this tape and we'll do the exact same thing to the next side. Okay, a uh, smart thing to do here, you, you can kind of see our chalk faintly. That's the nice thing about this chalk is, the, is that it wears off fairly well. But there is our finished corner. What we want to do is we want to chop off the excess because because when we create a double hem like this, you're going to have all this fabric hanging off the edge uh, and then you have to trim it later, which you can do. <clears throat> but a, a quick way to resolve that is to actually put a square, 90 degree uh, square on the corner and then line it up so that it's uh, parallel with the line. Obviously it's a curved line so it can't be perfectly parallel but uh, as you can see, it's pretty much parallel here. And then strike a line here from corner to the outer edge. And then do the same thing over here. So at the corner, line it up so that it's pretty much parallel to this edge and strike a line here. Okay, so now what we do is we chop off that corner right on those lines. So here's the corner, and then we chop it off this way. Now watch what happens. When you create your double hem, one, two, we get a clean edge here. One, two, we get a clean edge there. So you get a nice corner. Now that's not perfect there. We'll make it perfect later on. There's not a right side and a wrong side for this fabric. So you can basically position it so this side faces the sun or this side faces the sun. But there is a preference that I like to do. This side uh, is a little bit rougher. You can see the threads in it. This side is a little smoother. So I like to have the smooth side facing the sun. So this is going to be my sun side. This is going to be uh, facing uh, the, uh, the ground. So I'm going to create my hems so they fold this direction onto the underside. Now I love to use double-sided tape or seam stick basting tape for canvas uh, to baste my double hems in place. This is the wrong side or the side that it will not face the sun. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this along this entire edge here. Uh, this is a part number 129. It sticks really well and it's uh, something that you leave in the hem. So it just makes your job of hemming so easy. Now let's peel off the transfer paper. And this is our first of our single hem, and we want to fold it back a little bit less than an inch. Um, and then we're going to create a double hem. Now if you go a full inch, what happens is that when you create your double hem, then sometimes this can actually fo be folded twice. And I don't really want it to be folded twice. I'm going to fold it like this at, in the end. Um, if I went too deep, it would just be in my fold. Not a big deal, but I'd rather not do that. So look how nice this sticks. And I'm, I am guessing for the most part uh, what one, one inch looks like, but I definitely want this edge to be nice and smooth and straight. So I'm looking at both uh, my uh, depth of my single hem here 
and also at the edge to make sure that I don't have any hard spots. Okay, so I have that single hem done. Now I'm gonna put another row of seam stick along this edge and we will create our double hem. Okay, we'll peel off the transfer paper, revealing the glue. And now you can, if you can still see your chalk line on the other side, what we're trying to do is we're trying to fold that chalk line. Now, is it crucial that you fold directly to the chalk line? No, it doesn't have to be that accurate. So what I'm gonna do is just look for a nice clean edge and a hem that is consistent along the length of my side. Okay, we just wanna do the exact same procedure for all the edges. I'm gonna do my next edge and we'll not necessarily show you this entire process because it's done exactly in the same way. But I do wanna show you what the corners look like because of the cutout, cutout that we made at each corner. So I'll come back to that. We're coming to this corner here this is my uh, last of my double hem here. And because we cut some of the fabric away, this corner is going to look a lot better. It's still probably going to need a little bit of trimming. Yeah, look at, look at that. It looks really good. All I need to do is trim that corner off and it's going to be a beautiful corner without much effort. Now we still have to put patches in here, but what we're going to do to put the patches in is we're just going to rip it up and put the patch under the corner and then uh, rebaste it down. Uh, we'll do that in, in the next step. So we're going to do this hem for all the, all the sides. Okay, so this corner um, needs some extra fabric chopped out of it still, which is not uncommon depending on the corner. So I'm just going to take some of this out here so that that folds into there. And then this can fold over the top like that. The corners need to be reinforced for shot cord cover clips. We're going to show in the next chapter how to create patches for each corner. So I have some scrap fabric under here and it's facing the same direction as this fabric. Now the weave's not facing the same direction. I mean, if you wanted to be particular, you'd face the weave consistently like this. Let's, let's go ahead and be particular. So I'm sure there's some particular people out there. So now I'm following the same weave uh, as I am down below. So I'm gonna put this here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trace the shape onto the scrap fabric below. Okay, so once we have that traced here, which is kind of faint, faint on here, hopefully you can see that. I'm gonna take my canvas patterning ruler, I'm gonna put an awl at the corner, and then I'm just gonna take my chalk here at the bottom edge and make a nice arch. Like that. Okay, so that gives us a, um, a patch that's about seven and three quarter inches. It can be eight inches, can be somewhere around there. And chop it out with scissors. Now I didn't use a hot knife on this curved edge. I use scissors and I really should touch it with a hot knife. If you don't have a hot knife, you can use a wood burning tool or a soldering gun. But if you don't do this, you could get some unraveling because this edge is going to be left raw and I'm not going to create a hem on it. Uh, so for future patches, I'm going to cut this out with a hot knife. Now that edge will not easily unravel. And I probably should put some double-sided tape on this because I don't want it to move around. So I'm just going to put it on the um, sides and at the bottom edge. Here and here. We need to reinforce it with uh, a vinyl product. And I'm using shelter, right? It doesn't matter the color because no one's going to see this. So we're only doing this because of the fact that we're going to put shock cord cover clips into this um, uh, sunshade. And we do not want it to be stress the fabric out at all. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trace around this a little bit and then trace around this edge, but I'm gonna cut this, this patch smaller, especially on the uh, curved area, because I don't want it to show up. But I also wanna sew through it too. So I'm gonna cut on the inside of this line here. And cut this off. 
and then we're going to stick our double-sided tape on the back side of this. There is no right side or wrong side of this vinyl. If you've got a good heavy vinyl scrap fabric laying around, just use that. That's all we're looking for. You can use Pfeiffer Tex Plus. You can use uh, Shelter Right material, Weblon Regatta, Stamoid, Herculite, you know, all those uh, cover top vinyls will work well. I don't recommend a seating vinyl. Okay, so now we're going to open up this hem here. And first we're going to stick our vinyl patch down right to the edges. Then we're going to peel off the transfer paper of our patch that we made. And we are going to stick it over the top. And that hides that vinyl patch. As you can see, the, it's uh, not showing here at the edge at all. And then we'll pull our hem back over and we will touch up the corner with a hot knife where it's raw. We'll simply make patches for all the corners in the exact same manner here. So I'm cutting on top of glass, which uh, transfers all the heat to the fabric, and it also makes it nice and smooth for cutting. This is a Cerite tempered cutting glass for hot knife. And I'm using the Cerite Edge hot knife. This is the cordless one. We also have a corded one that is less expensive if you'd like to use that. But this one, I am untethered. Now that we have patches at each corner, it's time to sew the hem and patches in place. Okay, we're gonna start at one of the corners, doesn't matter which, and we're gonna sew around the perimeter first, and then we'll come back and we'll sew these patches on after we're sewing around the perimeter. Uh, I'm gonna start um, with my stitch right at this corner here, so I can just take turns, and this uh, first stitch stitching, I'm gonna do a little bit of reversing. The Sayrite Ultra Feed walking foot sewing machines work great for this type of project. Okay, so I'm going to basically use this foot and this edge to keep my fabric nice and, or my stitch nice and straight. This Sayrite Ultra Feed sewing machine is set up in the industrial sewing table with the workhorse servo motor. Now, before you go get sewing very far, you should always check to make sure your tension looks good. My tension looks great. I've already tested it in some scrap, which is what you should always do. And now we begin the task, which is pretty easy, the sewing of sewing all the way around. We're using a size number 20 needle and V92 polyester thread. Now notice how I like to do this. What I typically do is I will stop with my needle buried. If it's not buried, I'll roll the balance wheel by hand until it is buried. Then I position all my fabric. With the needle buried, I don't have to worry about losing my position. I'll position the fabric uh, to the point where I can sew a good deal without doing anything else. I'll put this other hand out here and I will sew guiding the fabric as I go. Notice I'm not making adjustments until I'm at a stopped position. So right here, I'll stop again, I'll make adjustments, and I will sew. So I'm coming to another corner, and what I'll do is I will stop sewing, basically where I'm going to be sewing down the other side with my needle buried coming up slightly, and then pivot on the buried needle, and then lower my foot. Don't ever forget to lower your foot or you'll cause sewing problems, and sew down the next side. Okay, the corners, what we're going to do is we're going to just sew uh, from this edge, doing some reversing, and sew all the way to this edge, doing some reversing. But we're also going to put the say right tag in this, on this side. This is the long side. That way, uh, the, uh, whoever puts this uh, shade up will start getting used to the fact that this is the underside or, or this is the back side of the uh, shade sail. So there we go. So we're going to sew that tag in only on one corner. 
So what you want to do is start here and do a little bit of reversing to lock your stitches in place. And then sew very close to that raw edge, following the curve. And then when you get to this side, do the same reversing. Okay, and that's all that's necessary uh, for each one of the corner patches. Okay, every corner is done now, except for at the ends, you'll see there's a little bit of fabric that just kind of hangs off. It, uh, it's a little bit different at each corner. Uh, what I want to do is I want to secure that down either with a stitch here or a stitch here um, just to make sure that it doesn't have a tendency to ride up. So I'm going to place the stitch. It doesn't really matter where you place it. You just want to secure it down. I'm going to place the stitch right here on the end. Okay. So that one's down, that's not gonna come up. Shock cord cover clips work great at each corner. We're gonna show you how to install them now. Okay, we're gonna be installing shock cord cover clips that have elastic on them. And to do that, we're gonna use the Sayrite drill hole cutter set. And inside there are a variety of different hole cutters. We want the quarter inch hole cutter out of the kit. And then we will install it in a drill with a, a chuck that's a 3 8 inch or more. We're going to use the uh, Sayerite cutting block and die holder to place it on the underside of our patch assembly. We're going to put the knob on the underside. This is our underside, the side that uh, is not facing the sun. We're going to take the top portion of the stay put cover clip and we're going to take our shock cord. You can see the metal piece has some um, a bite there. I like to face the bite towards the uh, center of the clip and push it in and pull so it's in position and then I take the other side with its bite and position it to the center. That way your shock cord is not twisted at all. So that's ready for installation. And we want to position this just about at that location there. Uh, there's no right or wrong spot but we want it hanging off the edge just a little bit. And I'm going to put my uh, Sayrite cutting block and die holder on the underside. And we're going to punch a hole with our quarter inch hole cutter right there. Goes right through. Beautiful hole. We're going to put this male portion underneath. We're going to put the button on top as shown. And we're going to give it a little tap and that locks it in place right there on that corner. This is the underside. This is the uh, sides facing the sun. I think I want it right about there. I'll put my cut cutting block on the underside. So I'm gonna put a hole right here. Run the male portion through the hole, put this on top, give it a couple soft blows with a mallet, and she's installed. That's the uh, underside, and that's the side facing the sun. Our sunshade is now complete. It's now time to install it. The carbon fiber poles on this boat have a rope with a bungee ball attached to it, but you can also use stainless steel hooks if you'd like. Now we've already installed more than half the shade, but we're going to show you how easy it is to install. We're using shock cord cover clips and a bungee ball, but you can also use stainless steel hooks in lieu of the bungee ball. There we go. Coming up next is the materials and tools list that we used to build this sunshade. At the Sayrite website, you'll find multiple brands of shade cloth fabrics that are all HDPE fabrics, which are great for sunshades like this. Brands like Polytex or Parasol. 
If you have any questions about the fabric or supplies or the tools that we used, be sure to give us a call or email us. We're glad to help. I'm Eric Grant, and from all of us here at Sailrite, thank you for watching.